Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. Our population is changing. They're okay with being out in these cold winter weather and, and walking and stuff like that. With the weather we've had recently, it is easy to slip and fall on an icy sidewalk. Sanford Hospital says over the last week, between its emergency department and urgent care clinics, it has seen 60 people for injuries that occurred from falling on the ice. Valley News Team's Maddie Gelseth looks into who is responsible for those injuries. The City of Fargo and West Fargo say homeowners, apartment owners, and business owners are responsible for cleaning snow and ice from their land and the adjacent sidewalks. It is in our city ordinance that they are responsible for the maintenance of that sidewalk and the ice clearing in the snow. And if they fail to do so, someone trips and falls, someone slips and falls, um, they are absolutely liable as well. Dow says people not cleaning snow and ice from sidewalks is a growing problem in the city of Fargo. And in the past three years, complaints have been going up. Last year we did about 1,500 complaints. Um, this year we're somewhere between four and 500 complaints already. Fargo's enforcement process for unclean sidewalks is that the Public Works Department takes a complaint. An inspector gives the property a notice, telling them they have 24 hours to clean it up. Then after 24 hours, they inspect it again. If it's not cleaned up, the city does it and bills the property owner for their work. Our standard charge is $75, then everything above that, that covers a 50-foot lot. Anything above that's a dollar a foot. West Fargo says they give property owners 48 hours to clean it up. West Fargo charges property owners for the amount of property they had to clean, the time it took, and the equipment they used. It's a bill that Dow says can quickly add up. But some property owners can take extra steps to prevent that from happening, such as using ice melt or shoveling after a winter storm. In recent years, products like this one to melt ice has been in short supply. We talked to a bunch of retailers today who said they don't have a problem with it being on the shelves, at least for now. Reporting in Fargo, Medi Jalsep, Valley News Live. The Fargo Public Works Department recommends that you call them if you have a problem with a sidewalk that hasn't been cleaned off. Their number is right there on the bottom of your screen, 241-1453. Officials are investigating what caused a fire to break out on the 500 block of Dakota Avenue in Wapiton this afternoon. Firefighters got the call about 1.30. The blaze impacts businesses and apartments on that block. We're waiting for more information on the fire and we'll bring it to you at valleynewslive.com as soon as we get it. People living in the Westmore apartments in South Fargo found themselves in a slippery situation after a water main break earlier today. Crews say plumbers were working to replace a water heater and thought the water was shut off, but it was not. And that resulted in four inches of water throughout the lower floor, impacting eight different units. The cost of damages hasn't been released yet. We're going to work with the residents of those five units um, that did get um, wet and get them into some alternative housing or, you know, look at what they're, they're looking for too. The city of Fargo said in a statement that it wasn't their fault that the water was not shut off. All the families impacted by the flooding have been put up in hotels. There's no word yet as to when they can return home. Authorities in Jamestown are still looking for a suspect after they called off a dangerous high-speed chase. Police tried to stop an SUV in the city around 11.30 Tuesday night. The driver refused to stop, speeding from police onto Highway 281, traveling south out of Jamestown and onto other gravel roads west of there. Speeds reached upwards of 100 miles an hour before authorities stopped the chase just after midnight. They are still investigating. We lost some of the wind, but the cold air still has a grip on the area. Hutch, any concerns for this evening? Well, we're going to see some rapidly falling temperatures heading into the evening. No surprise with quiet winds and some clear skies. We'll see temperatures slipping back down to zero or below zero. Notice the bank of clouds and even some snow showers in the western portion of North Dakota. There'll be a chance for some of that. Today's wind chills, well, they, we started out pretty bleak, 15 to 30 below as we mentioned last night. But now, as we head into the evening, the wind calming down out to the west where wind chills are a little less gripping, but still feels like around 10 below out there. The wind, it's from the north, but notice a switch in directions to southerly in our western counties. Your evening forecast shows we'll have wind chills all night. Wind picks up from the south, so even though temperatures will start warming before daybreak, thanks to the clouds, 
it does look like it will still be a chilly start to your Thursday. More details on how the rest of your Thursday is looking here in just a few minutes. All right, thanks, Hutch. Fargo police need your help identifying the man in this picture. The department says he was involved in a recent vehicle theft and unauthorized use of credit cards. If you have any information on him, you can call Fargo police at 241-1405. Authorities in Bagley are investigating after numerous people called in saying their vehicle or snowmobile had been stolen. It started Tuesday morning with a call of two stolen vehicles and a stolen snowmobile. And then throughout the day, more calls came in for the same things. Authorities did find most of the vehicles along with a TV and a chainsaw that had been stolen from a home. However, they are still searching for this Skidoo snowmobile that was stolen from a home. Sheriff's deputies do have fingerprints from the crime scenes. Anyone with information about the thefts can call the Sheriff's Department at 218-694-6226. A Minnesota man is dead after his rig went off the road and was hit by a car. The crash happened this morning near Monaga on Highway 71. The Minnesota State Patrol says 46-year-old Jesse Jones from Monaga was riding his snowmobile in the ditch, tried going off the shoulder and ended up on the road. He was then hit by a car heading north. The car was driven by 30-year-old Andrew Vaverick of Browerville, Minnesota. Jones was wearing a helmet at the time of the crash and police say alcohol was not involved. If we find ways to uh, help with compassion fatigue among providers, it will um, keep more people doing the work. And uh, the need is huge. The opioid epidemic, coupled with other addictions, homelessness, and the community's mental health needs, puts a strain on local resources. But now recovery groups and counselors in our area are working on a new alliance to best serve everyone in the community. Valley News Team's Veronica Marshall explains how it helps. I really think there isn't a family in our community that hasn't been uh, affected one way or another uh, by someone who has an issue in which they're searching to have recovery. From drugs to gambling to overeating, almost everyone knows someone who needs help, but not everyone knows where to get it or how. Now there's a plan to fix that. More than a dozen local recovery groups are working together to create an alliance where they can lean on each other to help those in need and create healthier communities. There are so many helpful people, so many wonderful agencies seeking to provide supports for people who are desiring recovery and collaborating together, having an alliance, would just really uh, improve those services. But the Alliance can do more than help with referrals and short-term projects. Organizers say it can benefit the community in the long term by keeping providers in their caregiving roles. Compassion fatigue is something that happens to caregivers many times um, when they are putting their own emotions aside to take care of others and they just continue to burn the candle at both ends trying to help and uh, sooner or later it does catch up to them. It's something Roberts understands because he's been through it. My own personal experience was I, I hit a point where I needed to stop for a while. It was because I wasn't taking care of myself and um, you know but found ways, got help, found ways and you know if come back in. But that's not always the case. Compassion fatigue and burnout can end careers. Experts tell me about one in four counselors leave their jobs because of it. And that's something the FM area can't afford. The treatment centers in Fargo Moorhead are, are begging for licensed addiction counselors. There are just not enough people trained to do the work. Experts say the Alliance lets providers know they're not alone, and that can give them the strength to keep fighting for everyone. It's really helpful to know that you're not the only one doing the work. You know, that you're, 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 you make, your workload may not change, but if you have the sense that you are part of a community that's working to bring solutions, that, that eases the burden. Veronica Marshall, Valley News Live. The Alliance's next meeting is February 20th at the Lost and Found Recovery Center. An important step has been completed in North Dakota for implementing the medical marijuana program. 
The state health department says the application period is now open for marijuana dispensaries in the Devil's Lake, Jamestown, Minot, and Dickinson regions. Once those are selected, all eight of the dispensaries authorized by state law will have been chosen and will be able to dispense marijuana to patients. The application period will remain open through January. There's a $5,000 non-refundable application fee. The new North Dakota State head football coach, Matt Entz, has promoted quarterbacks coach Randy Hedberg to associate head coach and tight ends coach Tyler Roll to offensive coordinator for the 2019 season. Hedberg has been with the Bison for the past five seasons. Roll recently completed his sixth season on the Bison coaching staff. TNT Kids Fitness and Gymnastics serves over 2,000 kids weekly, plus over 100 adults. But it's more than just a gym. It's a place where kids and adults of all abilities are welcome to learn and get active. That's why their annual fundraiser, In Their Shoes, is so important to them. The fundraiser helps support their programs, like the United States Military Veterans Fitness Club or Curious Crawlers for the Little Ones. It also helps TNT expand its facility, providing more space and accessibility. The In Their Shoes fundraiser takes place tomorrow at the Holiday Inn here in Fargo. The event runs from 5.30 to 10 p.m. If you would like to purchase a ticket for the event, visit valleynewslive.com and click on this story.